Hi there, Mike. Hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, this is your video lesson for today. Uh, so your two things I want to talk about. I'll go down the list, and if you have questions at the end or want me to look at anything, uh, feel free to shoot that on over to me, and I'll do my best to answer. And you might hear my assistant over here uh, talking during the lesson. So. Awesome. So uh, I got your text message. Uh, it sounds like you had a pretty busy week, so you didn't get too much time to practice. So what I'll do is I'll give you another little fragment of paranoia. Remember, the idea isn't necessarily to learn the whole solo, like note for note, to play on with recording necessarily. Um, what we want to do when we're learning solos, or at least parts of solos, is kind of seeing what that particular guitarist does with the scale and does with uh, does with all the guitar effects, extreme bends, slides, hand rolls, that sort of thing. So a lot can be gained out of just learning like little bits and pieces of it, and then using that to make your own ideas or a jumping off point for for your own ideas. Cool. cool. So the, the one I want to go over now is towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the uh, solo. Uh, I think it's the last line. And there's a little fragment that goes along. It's really hard to hear at this point because there's so much fuzz on like exactly what he's doing, um, which is probably why you see discrepancies in different tabs. Of, like why is like, this person hear this and the person hears that? It's that. It's just a lot. Of, there's just a lot of fuzz going on. It's just a lot of noise. So um, this riff does this. I tapped that for you right here too, just in case. So you have 12, 10, 12, pull off to 10. 12 on the sixth string, and then we get this. He, he flattens, he hyperextends the the ring finger tip joint, and then hits that 12 on the on the fifth string, slides it up to the 12, uh, 14, and then hits 12 at the end right there at that particular passage. And so one more time, really slow. And we're up to speed. So that's that passage right there. And we talked last time about things that you can do um, with, with this. You don't have to play the whole thing verbatim over and over again. What you can do, the first thing is to fragment fragment that idea, which you can use break into small pieces and repeat them. So if I did this, is the lick. And if I just did this, Right? I could probably get away with that a few times. Oh, oh by the way, the, the backing track I want you to do this over, over with is the, um, the Planet Caravan backing track. It's really great for E minor and the, the E blues scale, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. That is this backing track right here. So if I take that lick, right, and I slow it down, and then I can take this and go, okay, well, I'm gonna play just that first little bit. Or I might take the other passage. Right, you break that note into small pieces, and then you can do what's called a melodic augmentation, which is you can take a uh, take another sequence and 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 combine it combine it with that passage. What I would do is maybe do like a three note sequence. that passage a little bit longer by adding on to it. <coughs> All I did there was do a three-note sequence. One, two, three, four, thing like the So I this. So I did two three-note sequences. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then. with that as well too. For this, for that, what I would do is I'd make the rhythms just a little bit longer, right? So I double their length. Do more notes here. So the original is this. And I do this. Just slow it down. That's all you gotta do. Right buddy? Right, sit over there so Mr. Mike can see. <laughs> um Cool, do that and you can move into other boxes as well. This passage starts. I like to watch something. You want to watch something? Okay, go in the living room. I like to watch something on my phone. Oh, my phone. Well, I better get on it then. <laughs> Sorry.
Big, best babysitter ever, the phone. <laughs> anyway, back to what we were talking about. Uh, so you can take that, take that idea and move it into different boxes or different spots in the same box. So for example, um, this was between box five and box one, E minor pentatonic, right? I could start this pattern in, uh, in, in box one completely. So I go, like say here at the, at the 14th fret, so this box here, box one, right? Do this. Fragment that first part. I could take it here. There, I played most of that riff, but I moved it. <clears throat> So I was just playing the notes of E minor pentatonic and it's just the same pattern that, that I did before just instead of playing it here, I'm playing it up here on the neck. So take it down around different boxes in different spots on the same box and see what you can come up with that way. Cool. Next would be to work on the E blues scales. That way you have something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more variety in terms of what you can play with. Um, <laughs> in terms of what you can, you can play. So for example, I might take that same idea, that, that same fragment idea, I might move it into the E blues scale. So E blues is 12, 15, 12, 13, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 15, 12, 15, 12, 15. So what I might do is this. So if I go to the back and track, take that same pattern, and do that 13, 12 thing here. Right? I might do that up here in the higher part. Same rhythmic idea. All right? So do things like that. So take that E blues scale, take the same pattern, and see if you can insert it inside of that, inside of that scale, and then get some new, new interesting sounds out of it. Cool man, work on that stuff for me. I guess if you want me to take a video, of, or if you want to see, you want to send me a video of you playing through that, I don't mind taking a look at that at all. If not, I'll see you next Saturday. Bye.